So now I want to see um, how quickly I can do the measurements compared to the AI. Already, three, two, one, go. Okay, so I would have to, first of all, um, okay, I don't have the tool here in this demo. All right, welcome to another video. This time I'm not alone. I have a guest here and um, hi, Chris. Thanks for joining me for this video. Hi, Why Chris. Don't... Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, it's confusing. So we both are named Chris. Um, anyways, why don't you just give a quick introduction and let the viewers know why you're actually in this video? Yeah, thanks for having me in this video. So my name is Chris. Um, I'm also one of the co-founders of Aristra. I'm responsible for all the technology. And I'm in this video because I recently did a PhD in machine learning and medical imaging. So I was kind of on the research side of developing tools like the one that we are testing today. I've published my own studies in, in drones like in radiology and nature scientific reports and Mikai. So it's super interesting for me as well to test tools like this in practice and to get to know your opinion on that as a radiologist. Maybe we can combine our knowledge on the more practical side, but also the theoretical side of how to design such a tool. Certainly. So that's kind of the goal, having the perspective of a radiologist and then the perspective from a machine learning expert. And we just combine this in this video series where we go through these different uh, AI algorithms that are currently in clinical use. So and this is now kind of like the first one that we do. Okay. A big thanks to Image Biopsy Lab for sponsoring this video and providing us with access to their demo portal. Other than that, they had no control or influence on the content that you're about to see. So in today's episode, we will test the, one of the algorithms from Image Biopsy Lab. Basically, this is the demo portal they have. And today we will focus on the HIPAA module. And you can see they have kind of a, a zoo here, like funny names, koala, panda, hippo and llama. But today we want to focus on hippo. So what is hippo? Hippo is basically a tool that does a lot of measurements that are used for like surgical planning and orthopedic surgeons want to measure different kind of stuff in a pelvic radiograph as you can see it here i can quickly show you some results here but we will try this out by ourselves after this one so we can see we can measure like angles etc and uh, also other angles shown here but um, how do we do this we will now try this with one case. You can see I can drop in uh, DICOM files here and that's what I'm now going to do. I just drop in a radiograph of the pelvis. I've got a small collection here. This is just the upload timer. And now you can see here it starts analyzing the images and we can now stop the watch and see how long it goes. <laughs> So these are now the results. So I think it was um, quite fast. And um, I had a little chat with the guys and they told me that basically this is also the speed you would get in a live environment. This is now labeled as a demo, but this is actually the radiograph that we just uploaded. And you can see how it placed all the markers, how it's identifying anatomic structures here. And also it corrects also for the, the tilt of the pelvis, which is kind of good so it's not just measuring to the horizontal line I think that's already good then you can see the extrusion index here basically these vertical lines and the angles here they also present this in a report here lateral center edge angle here shown here they also provide the reference values for both sides separately and this is now basically what also would get sent into packs as a DICOM result. And then we've got the other one here with the angle CCT angle on both sides. And also you can see how it's realizing that the pelvis has a slight tilt to the right side. So Chris, what do you think of 
that software? Is that something that's hard to achieve or what's your opinion on this so far? I would say it's, it's doing really a decent job. So obviously it's, it works. Uh, I was looking into the evidence. So on the website, they claim that they trained the system on 4,000 images of pelvis and hip. And I think in the deep learning world, 4,000 training images is really not very much. So I find the result quite impressive. But of course, we, we just have to trust the claims on the website because there is no peer-reviewed uh, study. Mm -hmm. uh, what I find really is interesting is that they, they wrote that they trained on three public data sets. So this is not trained on private data as far as we know. Okay, so they, they trained the algorithm on these uh, five data sets from multiple centers, which is a very good practice. But in total, 4,000 individual images, I think that's not very much. But still, for, for radiographs and for 2D images, I think it could be sufficient. They said that they trained a deep learning system, so they do need some quite a lot of data. So I would assume that in this particular case, they, don't, they didn't just only use a convolutional neural network like uh, most people do these days. But I guess they probably combine it with some parametric method, like a shape model or something that restricts uh, the output a little bit more, which currently gives better results if you have not that many images. I think one, one uh, important thing that we need to also discuss here, especially if it's for orthopedic imaging, it's that it's not yet able to do any measure measurements if there is a arthroplasty in it so um, that's one restriction but they are working on it and are expecting also measurements with the arthroplasty components inside within the next few months so that's something that's coming up that's good and obviously you have some other requirements you need to have a proper view uh, like image quality certainly is important but we will now try to Let's try, try out a few things with the software and see what the results will be. So let's upload case number two. What do you think about the speed? Um, I think the speed is really impressive given that this is an online demo. So we need to transfer the study to the server that runs probably through a GPU and then send no, actually back it to doesn't. you. So it doesn't. It runs through the CPU. I asked them oh, really? about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me mm -hmm. because the CNN for a radiograph is not that big. It's only one forward pass. Yeah, but I really like the speed. So this time we have a patient with um, some screws in the iliosacral joints here, or sacroiliac joints rather, but it's still working. So it's not interfering with the measurements. The angles look quite good here. Shows the last thing here, even this angles look quite understandable. Okay, so try, let's try the next one. So this is now uh, one with a arthroplasty on the right side, so it should not work. Yeah, I think this is a really important aspect that uh, machine learning systems have to figure out on their own if the case that they get are actually appropriate. It's really important to avoid errors. So let's see. It does some measurements on one side only. That's already a good sign. <laughs> Okay, yeah. no, no measurements here. So it obviously recognized the arthroplasty here. And it even says implant detected. So this is now also an interesting uh, situation because first of all, it's not properly aligned. We can see the coccyx here is not in line with the pubic symphysis here. Or, so it's slightly rotated to the right side. And the reason is because we've got a pertrochanteric fracture here on this side. And we will now see how the algorithm behaves. We'll see, so there's no error here. It does the angles, it does the extrusion index, and the points it's calculating, they look quite good. And here the report. Let's do another one. There is it. You can see the points it's picking out. It's more or less always the same extrusion index. Looks good. And here on this one, CE angle. So it also highlights here if it's below a like threshold here, it's 22 degrees and they have a threshold for dysplasia of 20, 23 or below 23 rather. So it's kind of borderline dysplastic and then also the angles here are 
too high. Would you say that the placement of the landmarks is consistent across cases? Yeah, so if we, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I think um, just from looking here, it's always targeting this kind of uh, teardrop or tear figure here, which is um, a good landmark and also the lateral corner here. I mean, there is some variability or even intra-reader or inter-reader um, variability within radiologies. And I would say angles like this, you have a error. If I measure it myself, it could be two, three, or even more degrees different from even from day to day. So I think it looks very consistent so far. I've got one more here. Okay, this is now <laughs> a scanned image. I, I took this on purpose. You can see this was not like a digital uh, radiograph. It was a conventional radiograph on a, on a film and then scanned. And we will now see how, how it goes. Okay, it doesn't work. Okay. So I've got two more mm -hmm. left. So this one is also now a special case because technically it's not a arthroplasty, but they did a periacetabular osteotomy for this plastic hip. So we can see on the left hand side, the hip joint is dysplastic. There is not enough coverage here. And it was the same on this side, but they just did a PO, PAO. And with these kind of screws, they uh, rotated the acetabulum in a way that there is now a better coverage. And we will now see how the algorithm is dealing with something like this. It's probably picking the right spot as well. This one is a little bit covered by the demo. And the result, well, it's a dysplasia on the left side and they corrected it on the other side with a over coverage, which is kind of the intention of the surgery. So it's, uh, well, it's just dealing with the values here. It's Actually, I could imagine that the algorithm takes care of the metal explicitly because okay. it's really, really dense. Mm -hmm. So you can't figure out if you have some metal in the image. Yeah, and as long as it's maybe not in this area down here, yeah, it may be still proceed with the analysis. So I got one last one, we'll see that one. So I picked this one on purpose. Uh, and you can see there is a radiation protection device here for the ovaries in this female patient. And we will now see how it's dealing with this one because technically it should not interfere with this kind of measurements. So it, it, it does not interfere with the measurements. The points look all on point here. And then it's showing us the dysplasia here. And on the other side, it's better and probably after surgery here. Okay, so now I want to see um, how quickly I can do the measurements compared to the AI and I will prepare everything here. So I have the correct radiograph open and this is now the algorithm and I will just drop this one in now and I just do the measurements that I normally do. So I don't measure some of them. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. And um, we need to have a stopwatch and just do this side by side simultaneously here. Am I ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, so I would have to, first of all, um, okay, I don't have the tool here in this demo pack, so <laughs> something like this, perpendicular to this to correct for the angle, center of the head, like this, and down here, center of the head, and down here. Got the two values here, then I can measure this one, this one. It's still analyzing, so I'm quite good here in the time. This one, this one. Okay, so I've got now the lateral center edge angle on both sides and the CCD angle on both sides, and the algorithm has its result ready as well. Okay can now compare this. So what do I have? 141 compared to 142 on the right hand side. Can't move it. 134 compared to 139. And here we've got 28 and 29 or 30. So we're about three degrees, two to three degrees off. I think this is in the normal limits, I would assume, uh, especially like if I do it that quickly. So I think that's that's quite good. So I managed to measure a few angles here. But in the meantime, the software was able to even do way more manage, uh, measurements. Yeah, you would think that uh, if you 
upload the same case twice it should come up with the same result why don't we just do this uh let's see yeah we, we should try definitely <laughs> so this, just pick the same case again we just have to remember 26 26 140 measurements i think that's all right uploading the same case again so before opening it would you say it has to come up with the same result like because it's some mathematical stuff happening in the background or could it be that it's showing us a different result it should be fully reproducible okay so there is another question like sometimes it's doing this maybe sometimes this it's always the same with the same image yeah is this general like is a general concept with machine learning and deep learning it's not a general concept that always applies but it's always a highly highly desirable goal okay so 26 was the same angle and these ones are the same as well so it managed to provide us with the same value actually that's very good yeah yeah that was really interesting so chris what do you think in the end would you use this does it really make your life easier as a radiologist yeah so there are two ways i think i would i would uh, certainly wouldn't mind having it in my institution simply because it's certainly time saving uh, for me, because I don't have to have a bad conscience if I don't give any measurements, which I normally don't do anyways. <laughs> but um, even for orthopedic surgeons, I think it's actually quite good to have the value right out of the bat here, not um, wasting five minutes doing it yourself. And it seems to be very reliable, but obviously we have to wait the final studies that are coming out. And um, But it looks, looks decent, and certainly if it's not too expensive, it can add a lot of... Uh, value and if you imagine if you're reading maybe i don't know 20 or more of these studies a day and if you save one or two minutes uh, it's already two mr that you can do more in a day and if you have a large institution uh, this this adds up and would certainly also probably justify some 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 costs in the end yeah but i think it's uh, it's actually one of the algorithms where i can say this now kind of makes sense as opposed to other algorithms that we hopefully will have a go at in the future, Chris, and um, I'm, I'm already, already curious what we come up with next. Yeah, me too. I'm really looking forward to this. All right. So, um, yeah, guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. And also make sure to check out the, our Arista YouTube channel where we will post videos similar to this, which are not MSK related. So we'll post uh, AI algorithm videos for brain and other regions, uh, cardiac imaging over on the Arista YouTube channel. I have the link in the description down below. And thanks for watching and see you next time.